edge. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So next, agenda review. Yeah, just uh, one note uh, for you, Madam President, is that um, the uh, Adams presentation has been moved to March. We had a conflict, and so we're going to switch that one out. So that's why they're not here tonight. All right. And uh, special presentations correspondent. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I appreciate you being here tonight. I wanted to take a minute, like I do every meeting, just to kind of walk through some of the things that have been taking place in our in our school district over the past uh, uh, few weeks since our last meeting. Uh, I want to congratulate the uh, Adams Wind Ensemble who performed at uh, the Heritage uh, Area Festival. Uh, they did a great job, huge crowd, always a great program. I had the pleasure of going out to Edna Hill School to see Cass B in uh, Bye Bye Birdie. It really was a fantastic show. Um, really want to acknowledge the hard work of Mr. Schneider and Miss Grace Seamers and uh, Mrs. Allen, who helps with the choreography too. Uh, so many people to put those kinds of show together and it's wonderful to see theater at our middle schools. Here's some Marsh Creek students uh, making their uh, California salt dough maps. Um, as a as a former fourth grade teacher, I'm a little biased to this project. I always like this project. So if you know your four regions of California, it's a fun way to show it. So uh, great job, Hawks. Um, Adams had a Halloween dance and their uh, haunted house that they do every year um, out on October 27th. So great experience for them. Uh, we have a new principal that I want to introduce you uh, to. This is Principal Smith, who was uh, principal for the day out at Loma Vista. Rumor has he he did a great job, and so uh, uh, we might be offering him some positions at other places as well for a day to get a little extra help. Halloween is always a fun place. I, I certainly couldn't fit all the great pictures uh, that we had out uh, there. I, I think my favorite was the top right, which were the Crocs, if you can kind of see those up there. That is a, that is a great costume. So kudos to the uh, upper grade teachers uh, from Mary Casey Black on that. But great job, everyone. Always a fun time to walk around. Also, uh, November 2nd, uh, the Bristow School community celebrate uh, Dia de los Muertos um, and had an ofrenda. And so uh, students and staff got to bring in pictures of, of past loved ones and pets to take part in this tradition. So great opportunity for them. One of the great things about our area is there are some um, great opportunities for field trips close by. So this is some Pioneer Elementary students uh, going out um, in fifth grade to go out to Big Break. Um, if you've never been out there, it's a real treat. Lots of hiking, a great topographical map that's there. It shows you the, the delta. Um, I was in Mrs. Perez's class on November 3rd. The, these students were doing a great experiment learning about uh, surface currents. It was really fun to see, and they were really getting into it. Um, I want to thank Mr. Bosco, who came out to talk about the origin of lacrosse um, from Native American tribes. And uh, he did that at Mary Casey Black. So a great opportunity for students to learn about that. These students in Mrs. Gonzalez's class created their own hand-sewn monsters. Uh, so great, great Halloween time uh, opportunity for them to learn to sew as well. Uh, this was uh, really fun. That is not Mr. Jones up there, but this is, uh, there was a BMX assembly that took place at Cray to acknowledge them for their 2000 acts of kindness that they had. Um, and then Honk Jr., uh, this was the uh, second musical that was performed in the uh, Emil J. Geddes Theater there at Bristow. And I wanna congratulate uh, Ms. Leviatchik and her whole team and the kids for putting on uh, a wonderful show, Honk. And then uh, Walk Through California took place at Mary Casey Black. So this is a great opportunity for fourth graders to get in-depth understanding of California history and uh, learn about specific characters and get really hands-on opportunities. <laughs> I really love this picture, but uh, this is Mrs. Odabella at, uh, and her eighth grade students uh, learning about the patterns that are caused by the earth, the sun, and the moon in her <laughs> science class out at Adams. 
I also want to thank Brentwood Vice Mayor Susanna Meyer, who came out to share about uh, community leadership with some Garen third graders. Um, and then uh, this was a wonderful celebration that took place out at Pioneer Elementary uh, for Veterans Day. So that that Thursday before Veterans Day, uh, the Parents Club organized uh, this great event. We had um, some great volunteers that were out there. There were veterans that were celebrated um, and they introduced and had the veterans in the crowd come up and talk about uh, what service they gave. So really a great, great event. And then this is Ron Nunn's annual Veterans Day Assembly. So lots of veteran celebrations that took place on the 9th going around. I want to congratulate our, our special ed teachers of the month for October. So Christy Rourke there from Marsh Creek on the left and in the middle, uh, Pam Smith, who's a paraprofessional also at Marsh Creek, and then Lindsay Antonich, who's an OT at Pioneer and Brentwood School. So congratulations to them and thanks for all the great work that they, they do. Um, and today I got the opportunity to go out to Mary Casey Black and see No Turkey for Perky, uh, which is a great way to kick off the holiday season and always a, a fun and cute show. And then I just want to remind everybody that we're coming up on our 10th annual uh, Brentwood Turkey Trot uh, for schools. I know, Mr. Gursky, you're out there every year cooking pancakes early at 6 in the morning, so we appreciate you doing that. And uh, you'll be running? All right, there you go. I will be jogging slowly behind you, and so, but doing my best. But this is a great event that benefits both the Brentwood School District and the Liberty High School District athletic programs. And that's my report for this evening. Thank you. Um... Any board member comments, committee reports? Just, uh, I have a quick comment, and I would like to take this time to commend both our staff and our students at Bristow for uh, the way they handled the situation, which was horrible, uh, horrifying and terrible for everybody. Um, um, they should be proud of themselves as far as their assistance and everything else that they did. I'd also like to thank uh, Chris and Kirsten for their um, countless above and beyond hours that they put into this um, in regards to um, trying to sort out everything that happened. And um, you both, I'm proud to have you on our staff, so. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, I echo Scott's sentiments, and I'd also recognize Dana Eaton in that as well, and his leadership and the entire team at Bistro. Um, I do have a committee report out. Uh, Twee and I um, attended a new school committee where we've been picking out colors and patterns and all that stuff. It's been really exciting. So looking forward to it coming live and in living color at some point in the few months coming up. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. That's it for me. I apologize for not mentioning you. I, I, I'm, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I know that, but it would have been nice. I also have a committee report. I attended um, a cybersecurity um, mm -hmm. talk with, at the County Board of Education office last week. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, at this time, the public is permitted to the to address the school board on items that are on the consent calendar, requests for future item agenda items, and items that are not on the agenda. All right, remarks are limited to three minutes per person. While we encourage your comments, unfortunately, state law prevents us from discussing items that are not on our meeting agenda. Public comments can be made at this time or during the appropriate agenda item. We do take them very seriously and if appropriate, staff will follow up. And uh, on a personal note, and just want to reiterate, uh, we're very concerned about the events that unfolded last week in our school district, specifically at Bristol Middle School. Uh, we cannot comment, and but we're still very concerned at, for the well-being of our teachers, administrators, and students. Move that we open public comment. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, the first person is Kinsey Sweetnam. Hello. 
Okay. Oh, it's already started. Okay. Um, I actually don't have any kids at Bristow. Uh, mine are at Edna and Liberty, but we went to Garen for many years. Um, we have the wonderful Mrs. Medina as our principal, and we love her very much. Um, the concern I have is security um, for Garen and Edna Hill, uh, mostly from external threats. Um, we enter on Lawrence Lane in the back of school, um, but most students do. Um, at Garen, this has been going on for years that the back gate is left open, unattended, nobody's there. Um, our campuses are shared, so that's hundreds and hundreds of kids. Um, at Garen, I, I was always kind of brushed off, you know, um, they put in a push gate, but then that just um, got left open. So parents, you know, kind of just would close it or we have to call the office. Um, so I don't have any kids at Garen anymore. However, I care deeply about the students at Garen and the whole district. Um, now I have a middle schooler and um, unfortunately having the same issues, although this week it has been better. Um, but the back gate on Lawrence Lane, you can drive a car through basically and is left open until we either call um, or on one instance, another mom and I have walked into campus from the back all the way up to the front office to say, hi, we just walked in, no staff noticed us, saw us, we just walked through campus all the way up to the front. Um, I did have a meeting with our principal and it was very receptive. Um, we did agree that the gate would be closed five minutes after the bell. Um, the pushback I was getting, not from our principal, from office staff, um, was, well, we need to leave it open for kids to come in that are tardy, who live in that neighborhood. Um, why are we giving them 30 minutes to come in? They're supposed to come to the office, right? Um, pretty sure they're coming in during passing period, but that also means anyone from the public can come in the back gate, and they have access to Garrett Elementary and at Nihil Middle School. Um, so I was told by someone in the office that they choose not to live their life in fear, that we should be able to leave that gate open because parents will call and complain. I don't think I'm living in fear. I think I'm being realistic in my, my concerns. Um, so I do think that things are getting better as of this week. However, my concern is, is this kind of security gonna stay a priority? And when we come back from break, is it gonna be lax again? Are we going to keep shutting it, making sure somebody's there? Otherwise we're tasking parents with, we need to stay and watch the gate because parents have to go to work. They have to you know, take care of their kids. They can't stay and make sure, they assume their kids are safe. You know, So I wanna make sure that's happening. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to um, direct staff to look into that back gate. Oh, okay. I didn't know if we do it after each, but okay, I'll wait. Okay, the next person is Lisa Bustillos. Okay, thank you. Uh, again, my name is Lisa Bustillos. I am a sixth grade math and science teacher at Bristow. I'm also the Brentwood Teachers Association president. Um, I am coming to speak today as a teacher who was there on Thursday. Uh, it's fitting that I have three minutes to talk. It was a little longer than that on Thursday when a series of unpredictable events took place to cause mass, mass campus, mass chaos on our campus. Three minutes to test the limits of our system Three minutes to start the biggest test our teachers, our admin, our police have had to campus safety. We know there are improvements that need to happen, gates that need to be secured better, technology needs to work better. We need more adults on campus supervising. We've had drills. They probably last a little bit more than that three minutes, earthquake, fire, lockout, lockdown. We've had an immeasurable amount of data from the incidents last week. That three minutes though, that three minute period is when we stood up. Our adults turned into the protective mama and papa bears that we are. We worked together, we helped each other, we supported our students. We came together to make sure that our kids were okay. And it will not leave me watching what happened because I was at the back of the campus watching things unfold and having kids come into my classroom. 
but it also won't leave me that when, by the time I got up to the office to help, everybody was helping. Everybody was in mode. Everybody was taking care of any kids that came up to us. That won't leave me either. Our staff has come together. We are taking care of each other and protecting each other. We still need help. I wanna say thank you to the parents who've come and volunteered, to the principals who came and volunteered, to our, our, our district admin who's just been there every single step of the way. It has meant a lot to us. We know that there are things that need to be improved, but sometimes you don't know until you've been through it. What was prevented though from happening, we cannot lose focus of that. This could have been a million times worse but because we did what we were trained to do, we were, our kids are okay. There's no loss of life from this. And that's amazing. We could be one of those communities that are on the news and we're not. And our adults on our campus have really come together to make sure that our kids are okay and we're still there for them. And we're still gonna be there for them tomorrow and the day after that. And then when we get back from Thanksgiving break, probably a little bit healthier emotionally, but we will be there. So thank you. And the next person is Carolina Villaseca. <laughs> that was a fast three minutes. Um, my name is Carolina Villaseca. I'm here tonight because I have two students at Bristow. I came to personally thank every teacher, staff, aide, hourly employee, the administration, and our incredibly hardworking admins for keeping our kids safe on Thursday. To thank the district, BPD, and the FBI for investigating the threat made against our school. The most common question asked that on social media is, how is the district and school going to fix this? They will do what they can. However, I think another question needs to be asked, which is, how are we gonna fix this? We as parents, we need to do our part. And I spent several sleepless nights just mulling this over in my head. And I had the following four conversations with my kids. And I suggest very kindly that you do the same. The first one is racism. We can't escape this. The threat that was made was targeting a certain group of students and teachers. And race had everything to do with it. Uh, it's not an easy conversation to have with kids, but if we don't do it, we can't stop this. This will happen again. Apps. We need to make sure that we know every app and every handle our kids have on their phones. Who are they talking to? And what are our kids saying on those apps? Uh, these smartphones are great, uh, but kids are still learning how to navigate the world. And uh, let's face it, they make mistakes uh, and very bad decisions. And it's our responsibility still, because they are minors, to guide them, to talk to them, and to make sure that we supervise them. Social media permanence. Kids think that because they use Snapchat, they type something and then the message goes away, that it's gone. What this incident proved is that anybody can screen shoot anything and it will live forever and get passed around like a hot potato. Um, they, our kids need to learn that when they hit send, it's forever. It's never going away. Somebody can screen shoot it. It can go in the cloud. It, the companies that make the apps, they keep that information. That information can be subpoenaed. Um, you may think that you're friends with this person today because you know it is junior high and loyalties change on a weekly basis. What happens when you're no longer friends and they've screenshot all this stuff? Uh, lastly, consequences. And um, it's perfectly normal to get frustrated with life and think, wow, I wish that I could blow this place to smithereens. That is not abnormal or unhealthy. Uh, when you put it in writing, however, it becomes a federal offense. Uh, this child will have a juvie record now. They won't be able to get a job, apply for scholarships, apply for college, and not only affects them, but also the, our entire family. And there are resources available. Um, Principal, mm, sorry, Principal Perales, for all those of you from Bristow, did send out an email with resources. Thank you. Next person, Michael O'Sullivan. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, board, for letting me talk. Um, my daughter is a uh, student at Bristow, and uh, with the recent events, um, basically what I'm requesting is additional resources to the school. Right now, um, Officer Bollinger, from what I understand, floats between a few different campuses. And I think at this point, um, we need him there full time every day, all day um, to stop any you know future threats like we had. Um, I mean, the teachers, they, they do an amazing job. The principal, um, they're great. You're great. Um, but we need him, um, you know, on campus full time every day. And that's, that's my suggestion. That's my request. Um, and I know there's a lot of other people in the community, you know, feel the same, same way. So that's that's what uh, the request is. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more public comment cards? Go ahead. Nova Moore. Thanks for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, my name's Nova Moore, I'm a parent in our community. My son went to Bristow, he's at Heritage now, and my daughter's a sixth, in sixth grade at Bristow. I came tonight to thank the BUSD district, the teachers, the staff at Bristow, and the police department for your immediate attention to the recent disturbing events at Bristow. I greatly appreciated the town hall meeting. It was The information was really helpful. Having the police department and chief and officers on there was great. Um, we're in unprecedented times dealing with the seriousness of the threats, um, including firearms and the threatening the lives of staff and students at Bristow. Unfortunately, most of our country has dealt with similar events and leading has sometimes led to the worst case scenario. I want to thank the district, the principal and Brentwood police for taking swift action. After those events took place, the families need to know that these serious threats will be handled quickly and then feel comfortable returning back to school in the days and weeks to come. And I know I'm not alone with the expectation that any of these crimes will be prosecuted to the fullest extent possible. Being juveniles, I understand there's steps that the police department has to go through to ensure those responsible are held accountable. Please do everything you can to ensure those who make such threats are not allowed back onto the campuses. We need to deter other students from doing the same thing. Um, from what I understand, there's one Brentwood police officer to manage, I guess, the entire BUSD district. It seems like the middle schools definitely definitely need more supervision, and um, if there's not enough funding in place, maybe we can come up with another plan for more supervision, but a lot of the middle schools have fights on campus, and it's kind of an aggressive atmosphere in general, especially at lunch. Um, I'd love more supervision to kind of quell that, the fights and the duress so that the environment's a little bit more amenable to all of the students. Um, one more thought regarding the Zoom. One of the police officers mentioned independent thinking that teachers have like during lockouts where students are allowed to potentially run off campus, which I wasn't aware of. So maybe communication with parents and staff just so we know what the plan is. And if our students do end up off campus, we can make a plan with them for meeting or calling or whatever. So anyway, let's be proactive. Let's work together and make it clear that BUSD schools will not tolerate violent violence and it's a safe place for learning and growing. Thank you. Are there any more public comment cards? Uh, Gabby Castro. Yes. Can I, Gabby Castro here? Uh, I don't have a kid at Bristow or um, any middle school. I have a kid at Brownville Elementary. 
And uh, my concern is that I, I learned that something was going on at Bristow that day because a mom, we were in a meeting and, and a mom was like, something's going on, something's going on, I have to go. So starting there and then gossip and other moms, other parents talking about it. Um, and I know it's the same district and it's not, my kid doesn't go to the same school, but my concern was like, um, we learned this, but not like 100% for like what happened. So it's just like coming to a conclusion that something bad happened and we don't really don't know what, how or what or when or, um, so I think I would like to, to know what's going on in the district wide, even though if it's like bad or good. Um, I don't know if I made myself click about that, but uh, other thing is it came to my concern was um, like other kids from other schools learn about this. How is their mental health? Are they like, do they feel safe to go to school? Do they get um, help at the other schools besides Bristol? Because there's, this happened at Bristol, but other kids hear, you know, news. Other parents, the families are talking in front of them. Do they feel safe? I didn't even ask my son about this, I, but my daughter was really concerned because she has friends at uh, middle school and she's like, mom, I'm afraid for them. And I, I, at the moment I was scared because everybody was texting at that time. They were texting their parents, they were texting um, other friends and they were scared. Now. They're a little better, but are they really getting the help? Because the last time my son had something going on, they asked me, do, how, do, how is your, how is your uh, health insurance? Do you have the resources to take your kid to therapy? I'm like, okay, uh, probably do, probably not. I don't know, I, I'm gonna find out, but we start here, right? We start at the district. And I learned that I think we have a little more help after the pandemic, but with this, um, this, this uh, event's happening. Uh, I think we need more focus on, on that. Are the kids okay? Are they getting the, I mean, teachers, we have a teacher here talking, saying that they care. They do, but themselves need the, that support too. So, thank you. Any other public comment cards? I'll make a motion. We close public comment. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, based on the fact that, um, like um, we said in the very beginning of public comment, we are not allowed to address each individual comment or any comment. Not. Um, however, I would like to make a, a, a recommendation or a, a a task or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's It's been brought to my attention that uh, we're one of the few in the area that actually we foot the bill for all our crossing guards. Um, and as we're aware, it's a very expensive uh, project. And I've been told other cities, it's the responsibility of the city to in fact pay for the crossing guards just for the simple fact that our kids are crossing the streets. Um, that's more of a, um, a, a duty I feel the city should be responsible for because there are, there are streets, I mean, not to get into a whole thing. And, and my point being is, is if that money was in fact freed up, we could use it um, for other security measures um, that obviously are needed. Um, I would also look into, like you or the staff, to look into the fact of there are 13 schools in our district now. And I think it's very overwhelming for one SRO to do all those jobs. And I'd like to look, have it look in maybe next board meeting um, of maybe adding a second, at least the second SRO, one for the middle school, the three middle schools, um, not counting Harvest Grove, but um, I guess that would be included and then have the other one do the elementary schools to give us a, an idea how much um, that would cost. I know we do a 50-50 split now with the, with the police department, um, but I, I think based on our population of students and uh, today's climate, I think it's necessary that we 
perhaps look into that. Um, the SRO is not just there to deal with problems. He's also there to get to know the kids and, and have the kids be comfortable to tell him what's going on uh, without being labeled, whatever kids in middle school label each other now. But um, And I think if we had just one specifically for the middle school, it would perhaps make um, not only the students feel better, but also obviously the parents and the staff and everybody else. So I, the, my direction, well, my request is if we could come back maybe and give us a price how much that in fact would be and also to contact, I guess it would be the city in regards to, you know, why, why aren't they paying for the crossing guards and, and maybe give us our extra money to have people do you know, more specific things like walk around for gates or whatever the situation may be. So, okay. Thank yeah, you. I can find out that information. And I appreciate it. Share it back out with you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you, um, Scott, welcome. for pointing those items out. I have a few just based off of what I heard. Um, I think uh, one of the speakers mentioned about support for other schools, um, especially Greenwood is a close knit community, right? And so, word does travel fast and there is that, you know, psychological safety, emotional safety and well-being for our students. I'd be curious if we could extend or have our counselors or whatnot um, be of support to the students if they're not already. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, our, our that is coordinated. And what's interesting is that we typically use our counselors from other sites. They form triage teams to okay. go around. So they have expertise in that. And they are, it, it does happen when we have events like this at other schools, like, like Gabby was sharing that. Um, we do have um, a need at schools that are unrelated because they're connected because oftentimes yeah. they have siblings or or they know yeah. what's happening in there. So we do see a heightened need for that kind of counseling that goes on. So absolutely. And when we have a higher need at one schools, there is ways that we can coordinate extra help to go over and provide for that. OK, I just want to make sure that our students and parents of the other schools know that they could um, access the counselors for support, especially if they're hearing from their um, their, their students students that they may be feeling some kind of way, right? So um, that's one. The second thing is around campus supervisors. I'd be curious, like, um, I think somebody brought it up about having, you know, at Bristow following the, the incident, um, that there were more campus supervisors and adult volunteers there. I'd be curious what that looks like for our schools just in general, regardless if there's something that happened. I, I would like to understand what the campus supervisor program or whatever you know looks like for our schools and then lastly i appreciate the individual who spoke about the back gate being left open on lawrence lane and i would like to um, ask our principals or, or leadership to um, evaluate or like look at where there may be potential um, risks of gates and doors being open after school has started um, just to make sure that we're just checking for things like that. Um, I'd like to understand that we have taken that protocol following the, the incident. Sure. I'd like to just add thank you, Scott, for bringing that up. I, I think that it's in a time when you react to things, it's a time to say, how could we have been more proactive so it wouldn't have taken place in the first place? Because it's a lot more effective than punishment is to avoid the situation. And with the environment that we have, I think that we need to move to, to get response on that. I think that police have to step up too and, and, and realize the responsibility for the entire community. And thank you. I, I think that gates can give a false sense of security, but at the same time, they're there for a reason and they should be monitored. So thank you. I, I have one other. Just, whose idea was it for the support animals? Um, I mean, is that I, and I'm not it's, it was just a, a fabulous suggestion. Yeah, and no, actually, I went in to see Enzo today and he was not there. And so that was that was my biggest disappointment today. So for those of you that weren't there, they had these wonderful support dogs that were there at Bristow and they were everybody's instantly favorite thing. Um, 
the the lady that was there had actually come previously and made a presentation at Rotary, but she was connected to somebody within the Bristol community. So that was the first time that we've had that there, but it was a huge hit. Huge hit. Huge hit. I mean, as far as feedback yeah. and everything else, and if you could reach out for, I think all of us would agree, yeah. it was just wonderful. And, and thank her, sure. them, whoever, immensely, yeah. that I think it, it definitely... Um, brought the level down of you know concern and again this is just a general thing all of us are so concerned and you know for me it was on a personal level too because i actually have a family member that was at bristow so i can relate to every parent um, and teacher that in fact experienced it because I, I it was just not only traumatic for the kids but traumatic for all of us you know and, and i wasn't there but my heart goes out to everybody that was there the kids the teachers the staff um and i pray to god we just never have a, a real situation um, um in regards to that but um you know we need to improve and the police department needs to improve and the, the city needs to um give us some backing as far as that stuff goes. You know, as Emil said, though, the only way we can ever actually stop it is if we got rid of social media, and that's never going to happen. So, unfortunately, that's what we deal with now. So, again, thank you. But if you could relay our thanks to the yeah. support animals, it was fabulous. I'd like to see it not only right. uh, when there's a tragedy, but if they could just... Important you know <laughs> incorporated or whatever yeah. so um i i think it was great and the kids appreciated it and yeah. um i'd yeah. like to have little rover sit next to me sometimes here so yeah. thank you if, if it'd be okay if i i said something real quick during this time i i want to just say a quick thank you to everybody who came tonight just to either to listen or to speak I, and, and I'm so grateful to the people in the community that have reached out because almost everybody says the same thing. They said, oh, my gosh, I'm so concerned with what I saw. How can I help? Right. And, you know, I, I've been a resident for Brentwood of, for over 20 years. My kids went through schools here. My, my wife works here. This is a special place, and it's the reason that people stay. Uh, but it's important that we keep together on things like this. And I was just so heartened to see the amazing work that was done by the staff there and pulling together but also that every day when you walked in the lunchroom, there were donuts and treats that people had brought in to support them. I think today there was pizza. There was it, the outpouring of support that they got was well-deserved, but it's also greatly appreciated. So all of you that took the time to just thank a staff member for what they did, just know that it meant a lot to them and it meant a lot to me. Um, and I just greatly appreciate you all took the time and the effort to come out here. And and Lisa, I, I appreciate your leadership in speaking you know, on behalf of the staff. and just thank you for for that role and, and all that they did as they went forward I'd, I'd like to also assure everybody it's still an ongoing investigation um it, it has not been concluded um our both the police investigation is still ongoing and also our administrative punishments are ongoing we're still waiting for uh, all the information to be gathered before we sort out criminal versus administration but it's not over yet as far as um, discipline and and like somebody said hopefully we'll make an example so we'll see again thank you and probably the most we've ever spoken after a public comment so still got one to go <laughs> yeah there you go all right thanks I would agree uh, with everything all three of you said, and I would just personally like to thank and uh, acknowledge the staff at Bristow and in our administration for all of the work they've done uh, through this uh, horrible situation. I know it's not what any of us signed up for, but uh, you all handled it uh, the best you could. And um, it's one of those things that we, we don't ever want to deal with, but it's something we can all learn from moving forward and uh, improve our our responses and uh, hopefully like Scott had mentioned an email we can get more buy-in from the city as well uh, because I do feel that a second SRO would be huge for our district so I agree 
Well, Steve, um, I serve on the interagency committee with uh, Trustee Geddes, and it's something that I like to bring forward since the city does also have members on that um, committee as well. All right, uh, next we have consent items 8.0 to 8.7. Could I have a motion? We, unless somebody wants to pull, is there anything that wants to pull? We Not tonight. All consent items 8.0 to 8.7. I'll second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, next hearings and appeals, we have none. And moving on to number 10, presentation rep presentations, reports, and other action items. Uh, nothing, no report out of closed session. Uh, moving to 10.1. Four priority goal update, development, and implement district equity plan. Before we get into that, um, if the people that had public comments were on that specific topic, if you'd like to leave, feel free to go ahead and leave. It, it, we're not going to view it as being rude by any no. means. So, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, you want to start? Let's start going. Sure. All right. Good evening, board. We're going to present to you tonight um, one of our board priority goals and give you an update on our uh, equity uh, plan. And um, am I on? Talk closer. Talk closer. Yeah. There we go. All right. And uh, so um, with that, uh, Ms. Joe will start us off. Okay, as Chris shared, just... and we're no longer casting, is our your board priority goal. We're on the fourth goal, which is our equity plan. So what we really want to make sure we highlight here is that this is um, the plan for the year was to form our staff and family committee to co-create our district equity plan and, and implement the plan into the school goal process. So we wanted to give you an idea of the things we've been up to since the beginning of this year. We um, we partner with the Conazales Group, and you've heard from them a few different times. So they started off this, the year, the calendar year, with some one-on-one -on -one listening campaigns. They talked to several people to hear where people were at, what were their thoughts. And then we went um, in April, we had a town hall that anyone was welcome to attend. It was well attended. And they, people learned about the work ahead and they, um, got, they gave a lot of feedback and they shared a lot of data on where our district currently is. And then we formed our diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging, our DEIB committee. Several of those members are here now, which is wonderful this evening. And so that committee has about 36 members strong. It has parents and care caregivers and current staff members in it. Then we went to um, visit school sites with the Conazales team. So we went to five schools really because it just made the most sense to, for um, really time's sake and get, and get a cross section of our district. And we talked with staff members, with parents, caregivers, and um, what else we visit? Um, students, sorry, I almost forgot about the cute kids. So at the middle schools, we had a lot of um, student groups and those were fantastic. They were so as middle schoolers are, very raw and informative. So I'll say that. And then in June and October both, we had a DEIB committee retreat, which was in this beautiful room right here. And we shared data and um, had a lot of great conversation and talked about how to move the work forward. So then after that, we had some subcommittees of, that, of this group, of our DEIB group. Um, in both August and September. And then we've had two committee meetings, which were um, in September and then this week on Monday night to talk about the recommendations that will be shared going forward. So those recommendations should be coming in this next month. And then the idea is to create an equity plan that really reflects all these voices after getting all this data and input we hope to create that equity plan that it really reflects everyone's thoughts. And then we will come back and share with you in April how we're moving forward. And here's our beautiful committee right here. There you are. I see you, Gabby. Can we have those that yeah, are where, here? Where are you? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Can we have those that are here tonight stand up yeah, so we can recognize you? Yes. Yeah. Please come. Yeah. Thank you. And, and tweet. Oh, there, you there you go. Right on. Thank you. 
So part of our LCAP goal process, this will all uh, go into that to develop and implement a district equity plan. Uh, we're going to one of our focuses is to, as part of our LCAP, is recruiting and retraining employees to increase the diversity of our highly qualified staff, both certificate and classified, to more closely represent our students. And you'll see that in the recommendations as well. Uh, provide professional development for all staff focused on equity, diversity, and cultural competence. The communication of our equity audit that was done by the Connie Zalas group that Kirsten just spoke to, um, it, that has gone to our district administration in August. Our DIV committee members saw that uh, this week. And then um, in December, it'll go out to the community. Uh, community. We'll have a town hall meeting on uh, December 5th. Um, at the, by the end of December, all staff will have seen the equity audit. By the end of January, our goal is to host a meeting with DLAC, PTA, Parents Club, school site councils, and student councils to be able to share the uh, equity report to them as well. And then in February, our strategic action plan and the LCAP, LCAP goal process. And that concludes our presentation about our equity plan update. Any questions? questions but I do want to recognize the district for embarking on this very important work and having a thoughtful plan um, being put together and developed with um, inclusive stakeholders that represent our community and our uh, district body um, it's really important you know inclusion is really important it's not just based off of what we can see it also includes what we can't and you know Inclusion, you know, often people think about race, ethnicity, gender, but I even think about different abilities, right? And so I appreciate the journey the district is going um, around equity. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the effort for so many. Really, I got to go through this today with uh, these two and uh, in a lot more depth and uh, it's, it, it's a difficult undertaking because it's, it has a wide range of opinion and what should be included and what shouldn't be included, but it's, it's a necessary part of our whole child development and our overall community. So thank you all and thank you who are here who are part of this and for those who are not part of this, who are not here, who have participated too. Thank you. All right, thank you, Chris and Kirsten. All right, next, 10.2, Professional Development Day update. Good evening, Board of Education. Um, Ms. Melendez and I are here to give you a little bit of an update on our November 1st Professional Development Day. As you know, we have two of those a year. This is the second one uh, for this school year. Um, in, for our general education teachers um, in, at the elementary level, the day was largely focused on our new science curriculum in grade K through three, and then our new family life curriculum and program in grades four, five. Also part of what our fourth and fifth grade teachers um, participating in the family life received was some training from an organization called Cardia to help them um, to be able to respond to some of the difficult concepts that come up in family life and, and how to respond to parents and how to work with students. So really effective day for our elementary school teachers. At the middle school level, the focus was um, really on various content areas. So we also did family life for sixth grade, eighth grade focused on health, and then really it was just dependent on the content areas, their focus. So really making sure that they had um, a day that spoke to their needs and their instruction and content. Um, before I let Justine share uh, a little bit about um, special education, I just want to note that um, this is a graph that shows feedback from that day from teachers, 378 responses. Um, uh, a, a one would mean they felt they didn't get much, if anything, out of the day. A five would mean they felt like it was a great day and they they learned a lot. So you can see somewhere around 86, 87% of staff felt like 
it was somewhere between the three and five, so good to to really good. Um, obviously, we we want to see nothing in the one and two, but um, we'll continue to work on that. But overall, good good response. Okay, for my part, if you go back to the other slide, so we made a customized schedule for our staff because we, um, well, we wanted to make it meaningful for everybody and not everybody is using general ed curriculum. So we have lots of different service providers. So that is a trick too. So for our fourth, fifth, sixth grade standalone mild mod teachers, they went to family life training because there is a chance that they might be providing their students that instruction. And then that we did have a handful of middle school teachers who wanted to go to the gen ed math, gen ed science and gen ed history. So then they enrolled with that. So I collaborated closely with Tamara so they could go to those different sessions in gen ed. And then for special ed, we had a, two options for, well, for school psychologists, they had, um, they were assigned to go to a behavior training that Mark and Brooke put together that was a combination of legal updates on behavior and also how to write a BIP and tier one and tier two interventions for behavior. Then we, part of that group, if you were an ISP, LC, or mild mod, non-4, 5, 6 teacher, you had two choices. You could go to that. This is all in the morning, so the first chunk is all the morning. Those teachers could we did a um, sign up genus so they could go to that behavior one with Mark or Brooke or we had another option which was more SACE updates and how like SACE questions and also service tracker which is how you do you know track the services that you're giving as a SPED teacher so we did two sign up geniuses and you could go to either of those in the morning we were at Bristow all day and thank you to Bristow for hosting us that was really awesome everybody was really happy to be together in one place um, then we had preschool. They had a training from SPG at Speech Pathology Group. Um, they were all together in the morning as one group. We had uh, the speech therapist also had a, a speech training that provides CEUs for them. They were together as a group. And then I led the Mod Severe teacher group. It was a job alike. And I just really wanted to spend time with them. We have a lot of Mod Severe classes in the district. Um, it's a very challenging type of class to teach. And I just felt really I just wanted to get to know everybody and spend the morning with them. And I wanted to talk about curriculum and where we're going and what they need from me. So we met TK to eight SDC mod severe. And then, so we talked and we talked about curriculum and kind of planning. And then I had the CELPA come in and do a training on like how to set up small group instruction in those settings. So that was the morning. And then we broke for lunch. And then in the afternoon we did predominantly job alikes. The mod severe teachers then went to the behavior training that was provided in the morning by Brooke and Mark. The mild mods, ISP and LC teachers did a breakout session on dyslexia and they also, a lot of them teach Wilson, so they wanted to do a job like to get a status update of Wilson. The behaviors were on their own with uh, agenda items that I had given them, but they worked on their own. Um, and school psychs were with me and doing the same kind of job alike where I talk to them about common topics and we set agenda items for meeting moving forward. And the speech therapist also did a job alike. Actually, Anna in our office, Foster, my secretary ran that one because she's familiar with the speeches and we provided the agenda for them. So it was very good. I apologize. I did not do a survey. It was a lot to put this day together being new, but I thought it was very successful. People were happy. And next time I will definitely do a survey because I do want that feedback. It was just, it's not, it is not too late. You're right. You don't think it's like in the back of the memory now, but yeah, you know, I will do that. I definitely will. Hey, do you guys have questions for me? Any questions? I do, just real quick clarifying questions. Um, I'm not familiar with all the acronyms, so if you can tell me, what does SDC stand for? Special day class. Okay, and then LC? Learning Center. Thank you. Yeah, so if a student spends more than typically 50% of their time in a standalone class, it's a special day. Our special days are usually more like 75 to 86% of their time, and then they might have gen ed PE. So it's a standalone class. Okay. We have mild moderate, those are less, intensive disabilities, those go to 15 students and mod severe, which go to 10. Thank you. I'd like to compliment both of you on all that work. It seems like it was one of our more active training days, <laughs> for, to say the least. 
So. It, it is a lot to put on, and we appreciate that. Yeah. It, it takes a team. There's a bunch of people working for us that help out, but thank you. Yeah, it just seemed like good for you guys. It's a lot of topics, and yeah. to slam it in six hours or five hours, yeah. it's God bless you. So, thank you. Well, thank you. Any other comments? I'll make a motion to close uh, item number 10.2. Oh, we don't need a motion. This information, my bad. Sorry. All right, moving on to uh, 10.3 federal program monitoring update. Okay, well, my while my friends are coming up here, this is the team that um, spent a lot of time together over the last few months working on our federal program monitoring that came from the state. So Kirsten's going to start us off here. Okay. Well, I can't think of anything more I'd like to talk about than federal program monitoring. So this is my lucky day. So we are, this came in as a walk-in item because we just got our results last Thursday. So that's why we're bringing it to you now. But what is a FPM review, federal program monitoring? The reason we have these reviews, our state has to to make sure that we um, are compliant so that we can keep re receiving federal funds. So you usually have a federal program mo monitoring review about every two years. It was our turn after five years, which I know doesn't make any sense chron like chronologically there. The math doesn't add up, but that's... COVID. Oh, COVID. Okay. I, was, I just thought maybe it was the state. <laughs> so there you go. All right. So it had been five years, but we were so happy to have it, have them back. So the areas that were reviewed were six areas. So we had comp ed, which is really title one, uh, English learner program, extended learning programs, which is really our ELOP, our after school programs, homeless education, PE, and then student support and academic enrichment. And you can see in each one of those areas, it has a number next to it for how many um, areas are reviewed. But each one of those, it looks like maybe there's nine for PE, but there'll be multiple sub areas for that. So there's hundreds of documents that had to be uploaded for each of these areas. If you're not familiar with me, I'm that's not me, uh, Lindsay Fuller or Lindsay Waite. Um, and I was mostly in charge of our EL uploads. Um, so as Kristen was mentioning, we had a lot of evidence items that needed to be uploaded for each of those categories. And so this is one example for English Learner 1. We needed to upload, we uploaded 23 different documents um, to show evidence of our agendas and minutes from ELAC for the sites that were being reviewed um, for Garen and Edna Hill for both 22-23 and 23-24. Um, to show, again, that we were in compliance with a lot of different areas. Um, EL alone, I, I counted one by one. We uploaded 157 evidence items, and then you can see all of the different categories that we were also reviewed in as well. Um, so you might be wondering, what are typical findings? Um, this is the average number of findings per district as provided by the state of California. And you'll see that there are a lot of different findings throughout the categories, EL being one of the largest, 17 findings. The days are representing the amount of time it typically takes to reach resolution um, in order to resolve those findings. So how did we do? We had three findings. So of those hundreds of documents that were uploaded, three there were three things that need to be fixed going forward. One was in the area of Title I, and that was around parental notification of teacher qualifications. Um, also in English learner programs, we had a finding around teacher EL authorization, and then we had a finding around PE instructional minutes. What we have to do is we have 45 days to fix those findings. And this is, I won't read these, but these, this is the specific area that we have to fix. So just to give you an example in that parental notification area, we need to upload a document that would go out to every parent notifying them of the right to be informed about teacher qualification. And then another document for any teacher that is not qualified as for as per California state certification that would go out to those specific families. Teacher authorization is around um, making sure that we have the correct certification and paperwork for all of our teachers to teach English language learners 
And then the PE instructional minutes item has to do with making sure that um, all of our students in the elementary grades receive 100 minutes of PE instruction within a five-day period, 210. So these are the three that we'll be working on in the next um, few weeks. Um, as I stated, we have 45 calendar days, which started last Friday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe that uh, the middle one is um, we're waiting for something from the county. The county has a role in that, and we, we think we can get that soon. And then the final one on, on instructional minutes, we have, um, we believe, ready to go and upload. So we don't anticipate any problem uploading these in, within the next 45 five days including that, including that one too i didn't i thank you for catching that i didn't comment on that because that one's probably the last one that we'll get to but we believe we can do all those within that timeline um there is always the we can always make a request for extension we're not interested in that we're interested in meeting that deadline um we just want to end with a real thank you. Um, there were three sites that were specifically chosen, and those are Garen, Edna Hill, and Marsh Creek. So those three principals met with us weekly for an hour every week, got phone calls, got emails, at requests for things, requests for it again, requests for it a third time because it didn't quite meet the state's um, need. So there was a lot of support from Allison, Lenore, and Teresa, a lot of district office support, and then various other people that really made it possible for us to get this done. Any questions? Uh, real quick, I think we all know the answer to this, but the uh, three findings for a district our size, how does that rank uh, in, in our state? We feel extremely good about it. It would be likely dozens. Um, the, la we, the, the last FPM we had, um, which I did with Mr. Calabrese and I led about five years ago, we had five findings, so we beat our record last time. That was really good. Um, it is not, I don't know that it's possible not to have any with the hundreds and, and they're fine-tuned combing everything you said. Sure. Well, kudos to you and your team. Uh, I think it's just another example of the incredible work that's being done in our district, and I appreciate all of you, so thank you. Getting to the, the county, um, they realize that we're under a crunch for 45 yes. days? Yeah, just they've been supportive. Just because you're dealing with it? Yeah, they've okay. been right. Thank you. And then from what I've been told, the, the last one with the PE, that, that pretty much is just a wording thing for us to separate. Um, lunchtime versus PE time, is that correct? Yeah, some of the, part of the finding in PE was uh, probably, you're saying in a good way, a semantics thing. She didn't, after multiple uploads, she sort of didn't like the way we had displayed it. It's a formatting thing more than anything. So we're gonna clean it up, give her what she wants um, and get that corrected. Perfect, and again, I'll reiterate what Steve said. You guys, you and your, people that worked on this and the principals in the three schools. You guys are the best. And we're going to say that over and over until you prove us wrong. <laughs> we'll try not to. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Next, 10.4. First reading of board policy, board bylaw, administrative regulation exhibit. Yeah, and this is just a first reading for you. It's an information item, and it'll come back um, unless you have any questions at our next meeting in December for an action item. We're number item 11. I don't have anything. Uh, any, any questions or comments for 10.4? No? No. Okay. no. Okay. All right, board member comments. Future agenda items? Just the ones that I spoke to as far as yeah. I've got some follow-up items, so yeah, follow make up. sure I get back They're to not, you. I don't want them to be agenda. I just okay. want yeah. to have answers or whatever you want Absolutely. to call it. And uh, answers. on behalf of myself, I wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving and hug your kids and hug whoever deserves to be hugged. And yeah. uh, let's make this uh, just a great, thank you, make this a great Thanksgiving and 
um, put all the stuff. Hopefully, uh, we're working on a lot of stuff, and and uh, we'll get through this as a as a, a whole group. So yeah, and then I just have um, one or two comments. I want to recognize Twe or excuse me, um, Trustee Dow Jensen for running the meeting tonight. I got a flu shot this morning, and I'm feeling it. Um, so thank you for holding it down. And then on that note, I do want to recognize the district for hosting the um, November 11th vaccination clinic for our students, families, um, and our staff. Um, that's really important. So it wasn't just flu and uh, COVID. It was the whole the whole gamut. So thank you. Yeah, you, you sold that one. I complaining I know, about so if it. you get it, don't, don't do it before a board meeting. Like, do it on a Friday or on the weekend. My bad. Say, but yeah. it just shows, hey, yeah. I got it. So It is a rarity. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to end on a, on a positive note from that, um, yeah. thank you, th because that was one of your suggestions, um, Stephanie. And I want to thank Edna Hill. I want to thank Nicole for getting that organized. But we had over 130 vaccinations that were given on that day, just in that Excellent. short time. So. All right, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, all in favor say aye. aye. The next regular board meeting will be held December 13th, 2023 at 6 p.m. I just need you to sign these two resolutions for attendance. All right.